Modern medicine is supposed to be evidence-based. We're supposed to take what works and throw away what doesn't. But because of medical inertia, we're a little slow to throw away what doesn't work. And of course, as a reminder, none of this is direct medical advice to you, so always speak to your doctor first before making any medical decisions. Let's get started. Pee -woo. For some weird reason in our society, it's become common practice, not just within the medical system, but in our own homes. Whenever we have a fever, we reach for a fever reducing medication. And I don't know why, because the evidence usually points against it. Well, I actually know why people want to lower their temperatures when they have a fever. It's uncomfortable. In order to get hot, first of all, you have to have chills. That's why you get chills, to create the heat in order to raise your core body temperature. But the reason your body is raising its core body temperature is that your immune system works better at a higher temperature. The infection you're trying to fight off is less likely to replicate at higher body temperatures. So this is done for a very good reason. In fact, back in the day, they would try and get patients to increase their body temperature by provoking a fever in order to fight off some infections prior to antibiotics, of course. But now, with the invention of antibiotics, with the invention of other life-saving interventions, for most cases, the average healthy person can withstand having a 100 degree fever and do just fine. Now, I'm not saying you should strive to have the highest fever possible and set a high score here. There are times where we do lower fever. If I have a very frail patient, outstanding medical conditions, if the fever starts climbing very high where it can cause some damage, but the typical 100.5, 101 fever, when you have an upper respiratory infection and you're otherwise healthy, it might make you uncomfortable. But if you can stand it, you might get better sooner. Up until the year 2000, the American Academy of Pediatrics actually warned parents to not feed children peanut-based products up until the age of three for the fear that they may develop a peanut allergy later in life. What did we come to learn? That actually early introduction of allergenic foods like eggs and safe to eat peanut products. And when I say safe to eat, you don't give a six month old a peanut because they can choke. So there are peanut pastes and things like that. But you want to introduce these foods early on, as early as six months. And by doing this, it's actually been proven that you decrease rates of the future development of allergies to these foods. So it's the introduction reduction that helps as opposed to the avoidance. Hurt your knee, end up getting an MRI, find out that you have a torn meniscus. The knee jerk reaction, pun intended, is that you think you need surgery. And the reason for this is because people worry that the pain will never go away or only progressively get worse unless they get the surgery. Some surgeons even feed into that notion. And while there are instances that there should be surgery performed, especially when conservative measures fail, this has been tested. A randomized study took people who have a torn meniscus and moderate arthritis and randomized them into one of two groups, getting surgery and physical therapy. And to everyone's surprise, after six months, the improvement in both groups was nearly identical. If you are trying to get birth control from a doctor and they're requiring that you get a pelvic exam or any other physical exam before the prescription, know that they are not following evidence-based medicine. In fact, in a survey of 1,200 US doctors and advanced practice nurses, researchers found that one third said they always require a pelvic exam before prescribing contraceptives. This goes firmly against guidelines and not guidelines set by an arbitrary organization. The CDC explicitly states that you do not need a pelvic exam prior to receiving a prescription of birth control medications. End of story. The harder you make it to access birth control, the more likely that you are gonna increase negative health outcomes and decrease the health of the doctor-patient relationship. Take a load off, take it easy for a while, lay down for a bit. I've heard this time and time again as advice given to my patients when they strain their backs or roll their ankles. But long-term, this is actually not great advice. Maybe for the first day or two, for a few hours, an aching back can benefit from laying down. But the longer you do this, the longer it's gonna take for you to recover and the more symptoms that you're actually gonna experience. 
And this doesn't just go for back pain. For example, when my patients sprain their ankles, I don't tell them just stay off your ankle and forget that you have an ankle attached to your leg. The goal is to get that ankle moving as quickly as possible, as early as possible. Maybe without weight bearing, maybe just doing small circles with the foot, maybe just drawing an imaginary alphabet using the big toe, but it's important to keep the body moving. A body that is not in motion starts getting stuck, stagnant, with decreases in circulation, which ultimately means less healing. You're trying to go to sleep at night and you start experiencing what's known as nocturnal leg cramps. So many people will quickly recommend that you take magnesium supplements for these cramps. The evidence, good quality evidence, randomized clinical trials have been conducted here and found that magnesium has zero effect on leg cramps. So instead of spending your money on buying supplements that are proven not to work, find out the real cause of your nocturnal leg cramps and treat that. Anyone who feels that they should be diagnosed with pink eye ideally should be seen by a medical professional. Why? Because we need to figure out first that this is in fact pink eye, also known as conjunctivitis. It could be a whole host of other conditions. And the way you really diagnose pink eye is by ruling out the more serious cases. Now, pink eye does not always need antibiotics. In fact, most of the time, it does not require antibiotics. I can't begin to count the number of encounters. My patients that come in either with their children or on their own with pink eye, usually viral pink eye, and request antibiotics or think they need antibiotics, or their children's daycare slash school is requiring them to get antibiotics. Most cases of conjunctivitis are caused by viruses. Therefore, they definitely don't require antibiotics and those can actually cause harm. Even in cases of bacterial conjunctivitis, it will usually resolve on its own, even without the antibiotics. And while there are certain instances where antibacterial ointments or drops would be necessary for pink eye, this would be in very rare instances of contact lens wearers, pre-existing conditions, very unique symptoms, like severe symptoms. So let medical professionals decide that, not the staff at the local kindergarten. It's been said that everyone who has flat feet would benefit from some kind of magical or even customizable insole. Maybe it's a custom orthotic just for the patient. The reality is, with a flexible flat foot, meaning not a rigid one or very painful one, maybe something that's minimally symptomatic or asymptomatic altogether, meaning no pain, you actually don't need insoles. In fact, this is part of the Choosing Wisely campaign to advise doctors to not over-prescribe these very, very costly insoles for no reason. Granted, if there's pain, there's other conditions going on, that's a different story. In fact, the use of these uh, custom orthotics doesn't actually aid in the development of the foot. So while parents may think that by putting in the insole, they're gonna get better outcomes later in life, that hasn't been borne out with the evidence. Nowhere is there a clearer example of CYA medicine, cover your butt medicine, than in preoperative clearances. Look, preoperative clearances are actually a great way to reduce the risk of complications during and after surgery. We wanna get ahead of problems before they happen, that's smart. But now if the patient's risk is low because they're otherwise healthy, or if the procedure is very low risk, and we already have some data about the patient's overall well-being from past tests or getting a, a thorough history, more tests does not create better outcomes. Nowhere is it more clear than when it comes to getting preoperative testing for cataract surgery. This is a procedure that does not require general anesthesia. It takes about 20 minutes to perform. It's a very low risk procedure. And yet some ophthalmologists that send patients to my office for these preoperative screenings require EKGs. Now, while EKGs are not expensive on an individual level, but if you calculate the aggregate cost, the aggregate headache that it creates for a patient if there's an slightly abnormal finding, with no benefit on the other end, the cost to our healthcare system is huge. Now, obviously, if you have a very complicated cardiac history and you're going for surgery, yeah, I'm getting an EKG. I wanna make sure you're well. But I'm not just ordering them willy-nilly. If your doctor is recommending that you have cardiac screening before a surgical procedure, don't be afraid to ask why and if you really need it. Being a family medicine doctor, I tell patients quite often that they have an upper respiratory infection due to a virus. But most of the time, 
In fact, the majority of the time, I have no idea what virus is causing their symptoms. When patients come in, they want to know what virus they're having. And in some instances, we do testing for influenza, for COVID as an example, because we actually have treatments to shorten the symptom severity or the rate of hospitalization, even death. But for the average common cold, you actually get no benefit to try and figure out if it's adenovirus, parainfluenza virus, et cetera. Look, while I understand it's tempting to know which common cold virus you have, in many instances, it's just not worthwhile to do such an expensive test to find out because the management won't change. The conservative management is still gonna be conservative and there are no magic cures. You wanna know the ugly truth about Goop and Gwyneth Paltrow? Click here to check that out. And as always, stay happy and healthy.